You got to to mess that up. You got to do something spectacular about it, right? What's going on? Uh, my mic's oh 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 dear. Okay, so apparently uh, we're having mic issues here with uh, with God. So hopefully he will be able to join me. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> just just give me a bell if you can join. Right. Okay, so we might be lacking gods for this game, so I do apologize. Uh, hopefully we can do our best here with the game. Um, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Obviously, solo, card, solo cards before, and we, we'll be able to have a huge amount of insight coming in on game two. Uh, but for the time being, we're going to see if gods is able to fix it up, and we should be able to get him in. And Ah, top boy! Enjoy your low priority. Whoa! EE coming out with the flames here. Ah, teasy. He's having none of it. He's having none of it at all. And we should, hopefully... Well, what's up with the pause? Do we actually have a reason here for this pause? Is it just uh, these two guys having a bit of a laugh? I mean, this is a game, obviously, a lot of hype surrounding this one. Secret versus Cloud9. A lot of people very excited to see how this one pans out. Obviously, so far on the odds, you know, they do favor the side of Team Secret. But if there was ever a large Western team to provide an upset, it's going to be Cloud9. Unless if they can do anything here today against the side of Secret. On the side of Cloud9... It will be Big Daddy no Tail. Heading down towards the bottom lane here on the Tusk. It will be Bone 7, of course, on the Puck. Farta on his Invoker Misery. We're playing the Daz on that, of course, leaves young Jackie Mao on the PL. Over on the side of Secret, we're going to be having Artur on his Shadow Fiend. Zai will be on the Clockwork. You've got Kuroki on his Support Naga. Puppy on the CM. And finally, S4, of course, on this core Queen of Pain. So we're going to have none of that kind of pie cat roaming support Queen of Pain shenanigans that I was talking about in the draft. Not today. But the game is uh, getting underway, and let's see what kicks off at the beginning. We're going to see the side of Secret kind of gravitating here around the bottom lane. They want to try and secure this bottom rune. C9, well, Big Daddy no Tail was able to make a little bit of a trip there and did manage to get out this Observer Ward here, which is going to provide them very nice vision on the off lane. And it looks like at the moment that is going to be where Big Daddy will base himself, and I'm sure Bone7 is going to head down there as well. So they're going to be running dual lanes by the looks of it, Cloud9, with the Dazzle PL in the safe lane, and with the Puck Tusk on the off lane. Side of Secret, of course, this Artor on this position one Shadow Fiend. If that's where they want to put him and get S4 on the mid, there's going to be the Ice Shards coming out. That's C9. They want to try and contest this one. Bone 7, he's going to have to run though. He's got the orb. He's not going to go down, but there's no way that he can try and take this rune away from the side of Secret. And here we go. So, yeah, so it's going to be Artor here on that mid lane Shadow Fiend. And we are going to see the position one quap this game by the looks of it. Puffy just getting the block here for Arto, giving him some space, giving him some time. And let's see what they can do in this match. It's going to be a bit of a clash here. Zai, he's on the offlane clock. What's he dealing with? Uh, it's dual lane at the moment, both the PL and the Dazzle. And finally, on this bottom lane, they're dealing with the Bone 7 puck and, and Big Danny No-Tail here on the Tusk, being, uh, being as sneaky as possible here. And, uh, well, here we go. Trying to harass them back out of the lane. Bone 7 doing what he can. And so this Kuroki support Naga... We've seen it a couple of times before. And uh, let's see how much he's able to achieve this game. Zai, he's going to get a fair bit of harassment here from Dazzle. Pretty strong lane support. It's going to allow E the space and time he needs on this PL to, to get his early levels and early farm. And Kuroki, well, he's just giving Big Daddy Notel the old little bit of a rundown here. Giving him a bit of a riptide and a bit of a right click as uh, he forces Tusk right out the lane and right off their side of the map. So far in the mid lane, Artor versus Farta. How's it going? Six for two against the Invokers, two for zero. Got himself a couple of crits secured up here. But all things said and done, looking very good for the RTZ Babizi. And, uh, well, it's, again, this is, is obviously the best of three series here. And the winner will go against, spoiler warning, if you guys didn't see the other semifinals early on today. And will be against the side of Empire, who were able to take down Vici Gaming. And Missouri just looking for a bit of a wraparound here still. Yet to hit level two here, so all he can offer really is a couple of right clicks. Now he hits the two, gets the poison touch straight out into Zai. So far, S4 and EE both farming uh, pretty much at uh, the same rate here. Nothing too different in terms of uh, farm going between the sides. And Misery just keeping Zai as low as he can. Because Clock was finding the levels. And uh, a little bit of a higher rate than Puck here. Bone 7 on the offlane. Kuroki, he's, he's still sniffing out Big Daddy. Big Daddy trying to be as sneaky as he can in this jungle, but... At the moment, not a lot being achieved here by Nota. But we'll see what he's able to bring into the game when he starts to go for a bit of action. And we're going to have a pause here. Classic Jackie Mao pause. We had a pause yesterday because he needed the loo. This time it's just for the hotkey. So. 
a little bit more of an understandable one. So we'll we'll have that. Uh, yeah, ten seconds. Ten seconds. He. This is. I'd say we're about twelve now at the moment. Well, the E pause. There we go. We're good to go. We're good to get ourselves back on with this game. And oh, I can feel it. I'm just. I'm, we're building up. We're waiting for the action to kick off between these sides because once it does, it certainly, certainly won't stop Kuroki. Coming in here. He's going to have a few punches from Big Daddy Notes. I'll just rip side in and back. Bone seven as well. The CS for him. Looking all right. Six for zero at the moment. Mid lane. Zai. Potentially thinking about a bit of a wrap round on Safata here. Seeing what he can do, but it's going to be the old walking gank. He's only got a point in the uh, cogs and the rocket flare. He's still not spending. Oh, God, sorry. I'm sorry. We missed first blood. They get a kill in return. That sunstrike's going to be a big one. It's going to be two heroes down for the side of Cloud9, one for the side of Secret. I'm so sorry, guys. Let's not miss this one because mid lane is nice. Trying to come in for a bit of a walk down. But uh, yeah, apologies. I can't, can't be thrown into the deep end here. The fact that we have no gods and. And we're getting on with it, but uh, and it's very early. God, uh, British people don't do early mornings, I'll tell you that. But anyway, two for one here for the side of Cloud9. And Zai wasn't really able to achieve that much there with that rotation as well, so the fact that he kind of missed out on a lot on the top lane, and the fact that Bone7 was able to involve himself there in a couple of kills, getting himself a kill and assist under his belt, Cloud9 are going to be very, very happy with that position that they've begun here. And still the fact that EE, top of the farm board at the moment, 22 for 7. Looking very, very strong indeed at the moment for the side of Cloud9 in terms of starting. But always worth to note that Arteezy, he's... Uh, I w I'd want to be kind of put this lightly, but he's kind of destroying this invoker in the mid lane. You got 24 for 10 on the Arteezy SF and 9 for 1 on the invoker. That's not great. And uh, oh, Kuroki might get caught out here. Bone Seven's coming in as well with the rotation. Kuroki's been trapped up here by the Ice Shards. Bone Seven will be able to grab himself the Bounty Rune. Kuroki just holding back the Tusk, but while well, BDN just uh, snowballs straight back out of that. And now s force coming in. He's got the Dagger Slow onto BDN, but he needs to be careful himself because Bone Seven's actually bringing the Quap incredibly low. Kuroki's still trying to do what he can here with the Riptide, chasing down the Puck, but Puck will be able to phase shift. And he's going to pop the South for a little bit. There's going to be a defensive Ice Shards coming out just to ensure that it's going to be a little bit more difficult for the side of Secret to ch chase that one down. But uh, there we go. No one's going to die there. Ah, oh, easy as well. Looks like he was having to deal with a fair bit of harassment in the mid lane. Just going to be a rocket flare flying out, scouting this out for Arteezy, making sure there's no supports behind the Invoker. And he's going to be able to save himself up and continue his dominance here in the mid lane. 24 for 10 on the SF top lane. He just sending out the harassment onto Zai. Zai's got the mango. He's ready for everything. And of course, we did have to see Big Daddy and Bone Seven head back to the bases. So this is going to give a lot of space for S4. He did leave the lane there to try and contest that rune. And middle lane, well, Big Daddy TP's in, but at the same time, he TP's in. A flare flies through very nicely from Zion. This is a very, very, very smart play here from the Clockwork. Just securing a little bit of safety, a little bit of a just a, the, the comfort of knowing what's going on behind that tower here for Arteezy. Still, Big Daddy. He's actually going to wrap back round towards the mid lane. Maybe looking for an ice charge. I mean, the, the distance is there. They could certainly could trap Arteezy out. And Arteezy could be in trouble here. The cold south's been thrown down. Oh, the ice charge. They're just a little bit too short. And at the same time, Misery and EE, they go in hard on the top lane. And they find a kill on Zai. So even the big daddy messes up. He just misaims the ice charge there in the mid lane. The rest of his team on the top lane are able to find themselves a kill. And oh, god damn. Bottom lane. Two for three. Two for three as uh, Kuroki and S4 do pick themselves up a kill. Oh, top lane. EE, -E, hello. He's got himself a haste and RTZ realizes he's probably best to TP out of this one. The Sun Strike won't hit. They weren't expecting the immediate TP. But uh, it doesn't matter nonetheless. He will go down. S4 just kind of backed off into the jungle. There's going to be a TP down to the bottom lane to help out Big Daddy here. Bone 7 still seeking a level 4. You've got no tail. Halfway through level 3 at the moment. CSY still. EE leading at the top of this board. Six and a half minutes into this game. Things looking, well, very good for the side of Cloud9. I think a lot of people expect a secret to absolutely walk over this one, but so far, it is very even. And if anything, a slight edge for the EE, but uh, you, you just got to be very aware of the Artor Shadow Fiend. 37 for 16. He's going to be able to back up and utilize these jungle camps as well here on the Radiant side. And, Artur's just going to get bigger and better at this point. 
And there's also a bit of it. Oh, here we go. Smoke up from S4 and Puppy. S4 has now hit level six here. Has the Sonic Wave. Puppy's going to try and lead in here with the slow onto Farty, but Farty realizes something up and yeah, he does back himself up behind this tier one. Rocket Flare's coming out from Zeiss, so just confirm for the side of Secret. Invoker is pretty much on his own here. And Farty realizes he's in a dangerous position. And does just keep himself safe and backed up. And what they're going to try and go in for this. There's a TP in from Big Daddy No Tail and S4 and Puppy. They want to go for this one here. There's going to be a snowball straight away heading for Artesia. There's another TP coming in as well. And can the side of Cloud9 turn this? There's going to be a shallow grave onto Big Daddy No Tail, providing him the sustainable to stay alive. And Artesia, he might be in trouble. He pops the charges. He's going to remain like massive Sonny Wave onto free. The Scream of Pain will bring down Bone 7 here on the puck. And Secret. Forcing out a lot of TPs there. Cloud9 try to do what they can to turn it around, but they end up having to walk back to base with their tails tucked between their legs. And a massive sonic wave there from S4 on the quap allowed the side of Secret to even find the kill onto Bone 7. Now EE, well, he's found himself a puppy, but, well, puppy's found him as our tours found him as well. So EE probably not wanting to stick around here at this situation. Oh, there's a hook shot from Zai here from downtown. Doppelganger's out, though. Zai's going to try and run this one down. He's got the battery assault. There's going to be a strike coming in. It will catch Zai. He turns it around, and he brings down the clockwork. There's a wraparound from Arteezy. Oh, he, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. And Artor, he's certainly the hard place. He's looking for the raises here. Puppy chasing him up to the high ground. He hasn't got a doppelganger here for 10 seconds. Puppy's out of mana. It is only the right clicks that he can provide here. Arteezy trying to chase this one down. Does he manage to get himself out of this? He's going to have the doppelganger again here. Can he do it for a big play here? He's going to go south. He he looks for the TP, but it's not going to work there. Artur with a final raise will bring down the PL. And that's going to be able to get the money in the bank for Arteezy to have his treads finished. And 550 gold on top of that as well. Bottom lane, S4's got a double damage. And S4 and Kuroki, they're working on this tower. The tower is, is very close to going down. The defense is there from Bone7 and Big Daddy mid lane. Well, they want to try and do something about this Arteezy. That was a big kill here for the Shadow Fiend. I mean, now TT's farm's insane. 53 for 16, two kills at the moment. Let's have a look at the net worth as we're coming up to the 10-minute mark. Yeah, he's top of the board at the point, at this point in the game. 4.1k on your RTC Shadow Fiend. Oh, still top lane. Zai is working towards his earnest shadows. By the looks of it, he's got those couple of gauntlets already finished in the bank. And, well, bonus seven. Maybe wanting to do something here. We do see on the side of Cloud9, they've got Big Daddy Nightsail. They've also got Mr. Dazzle, Mr. Misery. And the question is, can they actually get the jump onto S4? They need to find the waning rift. And well, S4's actually going to try and go in onto Bone 7. Kuroki's is there as well. S4's just going to hold himself back. Still 10 seconds before he's got that sonic wave available again. The ping is coming out. Looks like the side of secret they want to group up here. And maybe look for a bit of action. We've got four of them in the jungle at the moment. Puppy's just been making the stacks here. Almost certainly for Arteezy. And Arteezy. He will just grab himself this 10 minute rune. Oh, Big Daddy No Tail. He's no balling in here on S4, but there's a lot of the side of Secret here. Hookshot going to go straight past onto Bone 7. There will be a sleep here from Kuroki on the high ground, trying to set things up on the sidelines of the sleep. S4 blows up No Tail there with a the sonic wave. Bone 7 pops down the Dream Call. There's backup coming in from Fanta, but it doesn't matter. Bone 7 is already dead. Puppy controlling Misery here from the high ground. It's a double kill for S4. S4 will be able to blink himself away. Zai gets out as well. And Team Secret. Again, just taking the favorable trades against the side of Cloud9. Great control from the team, and Puppy there just from the high ground. We saw him holding back heroes such as Misery, ensuring that he couldn't get in range for the Shallow Grave or such. And on top lane, Arteezy. He smells farm, and he's going to look for it right here. 11 minutes in, still at the top of the board. He's, he wants to contest with EE now. EE's doing pretty well. Arteezy He's going for the Arteezy Midas now, after the treads. Why not? If the game's going good like this for your side, there's uh, no reason to not try and excel your lead. And it's Arteezy. There's no more explanation needed than that for the Midas pick up there. Mid lane, S4. He's been given the space to find some farm. Kuroki, how's he doing here? Level 7 at the moment on this Naga Siren. He's got Arcane Boots as well. Coming up to 900 gold on top of the poor man's shield. And, well, C9, they're smoking up on the top lane. Misery and Notel, they want to try and help EE find a kill. It's going to be a kill onto Zai if they get it. The question is, is Zai... Is he going to be aware of this one? He's coming a little bit far out. He's got to be careful here, Zai. They really want to find this jump. They can get a lead in with a Spirit Lance. Oh, they can't really follow that one up. Big Daddy notes out of misery. Still hanging right back behind the PL. They need Zai to go a little bit more ballsy if they want to try and capitalize on this and find the kill. Oh, mid lane. Now oh, it's easy. Just continuing to contest Varta. And I mean, look at the level difference now. Level 11 against the level 8 of this Invoker. Oh, it's easy. 6.1k against the 3.6. Fada's trying to do what he can. PL will be able to clear out this top tower. RTC trying to finish this one off. He's going to put the record! Oh, 
Zizi, have mercy, please. Big Daddy no tell TP's in. It's going to be a double kill there as Artur with the raises picks off Farta as well. My goodness. This Shadow Fiend, somebody stop him. Uh, he's 4 for 0 at the moment. He's got the Ogre Club now. And it's just too much for Cloud9. Bottom lane, Zai. He's got himself an Invis rune. Hookshot is available here. He's going to look to go in for the kill. And, uh, well, now that the Creep Wave has been been taken down, he... he oh, just the Zai hookshot. Prepare yourself. There it is! Were they prepared? No, they weren't! Bow 7, he's going to be shallow. Great by Misery just in time. Misery will go down. And Bow 7, it looks like he's going to die anyway. He tries to escape. It's not enough. Zai there with a double kill. Perfect setup. And now he is teeping in. He wants to go for the plays. He wants to find something. At the same time, Big Daniel No Tail. Snowballing onto Zai. Zai will duke out the search track. He's not going to connect. Puppy trying to set this one around. Trying to bring down the sigil. Eternal Envy throwing out the lance here onto Zai. Bring Zai low. Farter. He's looking for the cleanup. Now, going over the Phantom Rush. They will be able to take down Zai. Can they find any? Anything more here? They've lost the tower here as Kuroki's able to finish that one off. And with the four members of Secret here, I don't think Cloud9 want to run into this one. But Secret, they want to run into Cloud9. Kuroki leading him with the sleep. Here we go. Joe Hot's easy trying to find himself in position. He doesn't have the Requiem of Souls, but he might not need it here. With just the punches on to five. There'll be a Sunstrike coming down. It will just connect to Hot's They can bring Hot's down. That's going to be massive. They do. They get the kill on to Artor. Both seven's getting low with the freeze from Poppy holding him in place. S4 on a dominating streak. Now he's trying to see if he can clean up this one. He's trying to chase down the quad, but he's a little bit lower mana. He's gone for that greedy build where he gets those boots to travels up and it's not going to be able to offer him too much in this fight s4 contemplating whether he can go back in here but again a massive fight there but a good fight for c9 in the sense that they did take down zai and they also managed to bring down rtz there so so cloud nine i think they'll be a little bit happy with that one because especially compared to some of the other engagements we've seen oh zai he wanted more he didn't find it though he's looking for misery the creeps were there blocking it all and again, so 11 for 6 at the moment between these sides. My goodness. And Puppy. He's going to celebrate with a little bit of Frozen. Why not? Why not indeed? And the chances he's going to be able to get off uh, an ultimate in these fights is going to be pretty damn hard. 14 minutes in. Cloud9, what's the plan? What is the game plan? Well, it's going to be to smoke up. Here we go. No tail. Misery. They're going to go into the Radiant Jungle. Will they find anyone, though? The side is secret. They've got three heroes on the mid lane, two towards the top. Zion Arteezy, they're looking for a killer. They don't have the hook shot. It's going to be very hard to control and bring down EE. At least they can make him feel the pressure and force him back out of the lane. This rotation from Misery and No-Tail. The question is, is it actually going to achieve anything? There's no one around. And the wall, there's going to be a TP coming down here. It's Puppy. Puppy. He's going to pop down the Warden. Well, smoke will be dispelled so they know that the CM's around. I think Puppy as well, obviously, with that wall placement, he knows exactly what's going on. And uh, it's very unlikely that C9 are going to be able to catch him out here. Yeah, Puppy playing incredibly safely there. Top lane, the press is being applied here from Artur and S4. They're trying to take down this tier 1 on the top lane. Yeah. At the same time, C9 just looking for a trade of their own. Mid lane, a lot of TP's coming in for a secret. I want to try and contest for Artur. It's coming quite far out. They know he's not got a tier 1 to back up to. So he's in a very vulnerable position. Arteezy will just stand, uh, stand strong here on the top lane. And will almost certainly be able to take down this tier 1. The question is, Cloud9, do they get the trade? Yeah, it looks like it. Will Secret try and contest this one, though? S4's moving down there. He's got the Sonic Wave available. There's going to be a TP in as well from RTZ. They want to fight this. They don't want to give up this tower without a fight. And, well, they're going to look for a jump. And, oh, Big Daddy is going to try and TP out. It's the first time he's going to be there. Yeah, Puppy with the ultimate there. Bringing down the Tusk. And the rest of C9 will simply TP away. So they lose the tier 1 on the top lane. They lose the support. And they don't even get the tier 1 tower there, Cloud9. That's not the kind of action they were looking for. C9 and well, now RTZ off the back of that. Only 400 gold away from the BKB. 16 minutes in on top of his treads, Midas and Aquila. This is pretty, pretty scary stuff for the side of Cloud9. They do still have this EEP out. Went for the old Booster Traveler course to, to ensure that wherever there's farm being sniffed out, he can head over there. He can get himself in any lane at any time. That looks to be safe, and at the moment, the safest place to be is indeed the top lane. And he's managing to keep his CS up and farm up, but he's still a good 2,000 behind Arteezy at the moment, top of the board. And oh, oh, oh. ancient stack as well here being made for the side of Secret. This is, oh, they're using the map perfectly, and well, they're going to go for the deny here as well now. Just shutting down any hopes of C9, getting a big kind of gold boost. And Arteezy with the illusion room will now look to clear out some of these ancients and... That's going to be more than enough to f help him finish off the BKB. Oh, 
on the side. He's got the urn finished. What are we seeing from other heroes on the side? S4 working towards that Orchid. As the first Oblivion self, 1200 towards the second. And Kuroki, he's got a mech. He's got a mech. Puppy. Doing very well this game as well. He's a CM. 17 minutes in, hasn't died at all. And if that doesn't earn your guy's respect, then I don't know what does. The medallion with that recipe that we saw in his inventory earlier has been completed by Zai as well. So <laughs> this clockwork certainly going to be something that you don't want to mess with. Especially with, if you kind of look at the physical damage and the armor reduction that Secret have with the Riptide. You know, with the presence of the Dark Lord passive that RTZ's now managed to scale up to level 3. This is, this is going to be a lot with the medallion. They can certainly look for Roshan if they want to. But at this point, I think Secret... It's, it's, they don't. They don't even need to. They just. They're happy just waiting for Cloud Nine and and jumping on them straight away. Bone Seven. He is very very close to his blink dagger here, and now he does have enough money for it on the puck. But yeah, here we go. Secret with the tools of their capability with the medallion finished on Zai. They're just going to go for Roche. They realize that they can take it incredibly quickly, and it's going to be very very hard for Cloud Nine to contest. And here we go. Roche and Dazar half health. Cloud Nine. They're in their own base at the moment. What's the plan here from Cloud9? We've got the Necro Book. It's only level 1, but it is out in the Invoker. Diffusal Blade has now been finished by EE, so in terms of the fighting potential, he's certainly going to be able to pack a, a hell of a more of a punch than he was when he was just fighting with his boots to travel. But that is going to be the Roshan down. Aegis now on RTZ. And they will see, well, Artor at least will TP up to this top lane. Look to continue his massive gold lead at this point of the game and in fact let's have a look at the graphs to see how the overall teams are looking yeah it's coming up to seven and a half k in terms of xp gold wise we're just over five thousand as well for the side of team secret impressive stuff indeed and oh that's easy oh needs to be a bit careful because c9 they're moving in towards the top lane bone seven blinking forward he wants to try and catch out our tornado do it straight away here with the dream call and the waning rift he has of course got the age he's gonna pop the bkb there'll be a sunstruck coming down the pure damage of course going for the magic immunity will force him back but at the end of the day i think secret will be happy with that i mean that was a big rotation there from cloud nine and all they were able to do at the end of the day is force out the bkb charge Aegis still sitting safely in the hands of the shadow fiend they couldn't even kill him once it was there's a little bit of a worry there for the side of Cloud9. Certainly to say the least. And Cloud9, I think they need to kind of just focus on getting getting the PLS farm at this point. And the problem is, with the four heroes, with how the game's gone so far, they, they can't really fight without him. They, they need EE for these engagements. I mean, just EE at the moment, very aggressively pushing down this lane puppy. I mean, <laughs> he just does it. He's not scared at all of this PL. Stands there, clears out the illusions. He just uh, says, well, screw that. I'm, just, I'm not pushing this anymore. And he needs to be careful now, because S4. S4's got his orchid complete. 20 minutes in. E will simply TP out. Looks like Fata might do the same thing here, heading into the tree line. Yeah, he's going to TP back towards the mid lane as well. So they do avoid a potential fight that Secret were looking for here. And Zai. Well, it took about the S4 in. This is uh, certainly feeling like the Zyra in this game. He's got himself another Invis ring. We saw it set up at the bottom earlier. A double kill here for the clockwork. Let's see what he can do with it this time. He has got the hook shot available. And he has got the rest of the team with him as well. Arteezy's leading the way here. Coming up to 2.3k gold in the bank on top of this BKB. And Kuroki's in there. Uh, well, he smoked up as well here. Ready to pop the song if necessary to set something up or to get the team the hell out then here we go s for an rtz just looking to take the tier 2 fortification will come out at the same time ee -E and bone 7 are on the top lane just looking for a push of their own no tails just spamming out the ice shards here trying to do what he can to stop this but it's not going to be enough cm is able to deny a tower here and ee trying to do what he can to take down this tier 2 but the pushing pad just is nowhere near the same amount of potential as uh, as the shadow fiend as uh, with this push secret should be able to claim this tier two and even if they wanted they could probably back off and and defend the uh, tier two on the top lane from the side of cloud nine Farte's managed to find himself the level two necro but still we haven't seen that much come out from this invoker we saw far to pull off a bit, bit of a big play now on the bottom lane earlier when zai did go in with a hook shot and the side of c9 were able to turn it around taking down both rtz and zai uh, since that, the fact that it's gone 12 for 6, the XP and the gold certainly going the way of the side of Team Secret. And here we go, ready to go up to the high ground. Cloud9, they need to do something. 
They need to pull something out of the bag and they need it to be big. Weave's going to get thrown down onto Artesia as well. He's taking a lot of heavy damage here with the Forge Spirit hitting down, forcing the Shadow Fiend back. Still does have this Aegis. He's still got this BKB in. Oh, Artesia just doesn't care. He stands there. Oh, that's a nice cheeky sun strike and brings Arto incredibly low. And the Ice Shards will pop the Aegis now. So the question is, does Secret want to stick around now with the fact that the Aegis isn't isn't there anymore on the SS7? Uh, looks like they do. At this point, with the lead that they have, they feel confident going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cloud9. And Cloud9, they're going to have to do something about this song from Kuroki. They're looking to set something up here. Who's RT is he going to look for with the Rec Room? He's going to look for Farta. He's going to pop it. Is he going to get the timing? Yes, he is. Goodbye, Invoker. There's going to be a snowball from Big Daddy trying to keep himself alive. Bone 7 jumping into the middle of the mall with the XP pod. In fact, it's the Guardian Greaves here for the side of Team Secret. And Team Secret, they've been able to take down two. They take down three. A buyback coming out from Farta. Misery getting low. He's had to shallow grave himself. And Kuroki is feeling the aggression over EE there with his defusal blade. Misery will go down. RT is still alive. He got himself a triple kill. And now we're going to see if AE can clean up. They've managed to find three key heroes from the side of Secret, but his four heroes down on Cloud9. It was a dieback from Farta. And I mean, they do end up defending the base, but at a huge cost. And EE. EE. -E -E, Jackie Mal. He throws away. It's, it's, everyone's dead. And with that, Zion's S4. They're just going to return to the tier three. I mean, he can buy, but he might need to here. Because it, big, oh, big daddy. Oh, no, Cell. You're a flower, but apparently it's time for you to be pruned. And now he's going in on his own. No, no, sorry, it's both seven. Both seven's back. He's still dead. He's not buying back for this one. Okay, so that, that didn't go as bad at the end. You know, they, they lost uh, no Cell, but it was a sacrificial, sacrificial offering there to the side of Secret, as it uh, didn't mean that they didn't actually manage to finish off the racks, but but still, things looking very tricky for Cloud9. I mean, we've got RTs now, 13.2k, S4, looking very, very healthy as well in terms of the gold. And he's got himself a double damage here as well. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. XP-wise, over 10k. Gold-wise, over 10,000 gold as well. Lead for the side of Team Secret. Artiz, he's got his Eagle Song now on top of the BKB. And Secret, they want more. Smoking up now. Puppy, Kuroki, and Zai. What can they find? Mid lane, who are we seeing? Well, Bone 7 and Farta. Hanging around by the tier 2. Lots of drawings coming out here. That's Secret, they really want to find something here with this rotation. The ping's coming out. They know that they're towards this mid lane. The siege creep. Good old Carty. He's scouted out for the team. They want to try and jump on this, or are they just going to try and secure the space to take this tier two? Both things could certainly work here, and Zai. Oh, misery. Oh, they're coming in, Cloud9. They're coming into the jungle. The ping is coming out. It's all been scouted out, and now the song is going to set up the fight here for Secret. Zai is going to move in between both No Tail and Fata. Going to look for the cog pushback, pushing them right into the center of this fight. Orchid onto Big Daddy. The Sonic Wave flying through as well. That's the Tusk down. Fata down as well on the Evoker. Neva Heroes with buyback. Hook shot onto Misery. He is on the high ground, but he's almost certainly going to die as well. He's going to be able to keep himself alive here with a shallow grave. But the tick damage should be enough. And RTZ with a Requiem flying through. Will be juked out by Bone 7. It's a godlike streak here for S4. Now the Blink Forward. Double kill as well. Claimed by the co -op. He gets the Orchid onto EE. He's able to take down the quad though with the Diffusal Blade. Now the net holding E down. Will he be able to live for this puppy? He sits there and he lets it go. That's a five hero team wipe. It's Cloud9. They're all on the deck. Secret. They lose S4, but nothing else. 24 to 10. Secret. They're ready to try and take another tier two. And, and Cloud9. It's absolutely brutal. The difference now is going to be exponentially awful for the side of Cloud9. It's coming up to 14k. It's going to be much more than that after that, that fight ticks in. You can consider this tier 2 well and truly gone. And maybe even more if they decide to push. Here we go. Secret. What's the plan? s is going to be back up in a good 15 seconds or so. RTZ does now have the completed butterfly. We're just 26 minutes into this game. And... You know, I was saying, you know, we were looking at the stats earlier. Arteezy at the moment in this tournament, highest gold per minute on average. And uh, I think this game's certainly going to help to that. And if anything, push up that average even higher. Because we can expect to see some very impressive stats coming up on the scoreboard here at the end of the game. Oh, no, well, the, if the butterfly wasn't enough for you, he's, he's just picked himself up a casual blink. Yeah, he's got the money to do so, why not? Well, let's have a look how else. Uh, so, yeah, as we saw in those other fights, Kuroki, the fact he's got completed Guardian Greaves 
It's been absolutely huge in these team fights. And S4 with these incredibly clutch silences thanks to the Orchid. And well, we were talking about it at the beginning. The Tusk. Poor old no tell. It's a hero. I believe it's 13 for 1 so far in this tournament. And I was saying, you know, Zai, he likes to run it himself. So if a team were ever going to know how to deal with the Tusk, Secret were going to be it. And it, it looks like this game, the Tusk just hasn't done a lot against them. Bit of a bit of a bit of an unfortunate game here for No Tell, and oh, who can blame him? At Secret, they've just had the control over the side. There's still a lot resting on the shoulders here of EE. Can he pull anything off at this point with the uh, with the Phantom Lance? I think the problem is you just look at his items, and you realise he's got to do that up against both uh, RTZ and S4. And the other other main course, the Invoker, he's got himself the level three Necro, which is going to be fairly good in these fights, but. The question is if it's going to be good enough. And it just doesn't feel like it at this moment. 28 minutes in. Especially with Secret now looking for Roshan again and Cloud9. They're all pushed back into their base. Do they look to come out for this one? It's going to be a risky play for them, but they might need to. Because if Secret get their hands on this Aegis, they're going to be ready to push the high ground. Sunstrike will scout it out, but it's, it's all too late. Roshan goes down. Artis gets the Aegis under his belt. And they're ready to go for a push here. Secret returning towards the mid lane. Here we go. I mean, the storyline for this side so far, it's... We saw a great beginning for Artois in the mid lane, and, and this is kind of testament to why a lot of teams like to take the Shadow Fiend away. And here we go. On to the Tier 2. And maybe on to more as well. As Secret, they're ready to try and break the base here. Pings coming out from the side of Cloud9E, in fact, doing the pings there. I don't know what he kind of expects from his side, because, well, RTZ is on the racks. Now, Cloud9, what can they do to stop this? There'll be a TP's coming in. Everyone's going to be here for the defense, and, well, I shot, so I'm going to trap out RTZ here. S4 trying to go in, trying to find the silence here, potentially, on someone. RTZ being caught in the corner here. Fortress Spirits as well, trapping him. He will be forced back out there. And, well, he's still going to hang around here. Second Ice Shards fly through, trying to disrupt this fight. RTZ's just a little bit too tanky here at this point. 29 and a half minutes in, 24 for 10. In secret. Here we go, S4. He's got the rune. And Bo7 just coming in with a brand new rift, trying to do something now. Kuroki, he wants to set this one up. He's got the sleep. We're going to see Artur looking for the Requiem onto two. Big Daddy and Bo7. Do you remember those heroes? Because now they've gone three heroes down. Zyhook shutting onto Farte. He'll fall as well. There's going to be a buyback from Bo7. But he's going to get Orchid up straight away. That's a dieback. GG is called by Bo7. And ladies and gentlemen, Team Secret there taking game one against Cloud9. And he, he tucks his tail between his legs. He runs away from the disaster that is his ancient exploding and what a game there team secret whoa 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 ladies and gentlemen that is it we're going to be going to game two the good news the good news is gods will hopefully be joining me for game two i do apologize once more for the fact that we didn't have a co-caster for this one um basically the start of the game obviously being a land they kind of started very much on time so uh as i was the only one in the slot it was like okay we're going